to start this one. Welcome back to another Ghosty Manor construction update. Now in this video we're going to be focusing on all the technology behind the ride. There's been loads of progress over the past few weeks. So the team at Lagatronics have been inside the ride, configuring all the different sensors, soundscapes, the phantom phases to work within the ride system. And we're going to have an exclusive chat with one of the actual lead developers from Lagatronics on how you bring a ride like this to life. So starting with the pre-show areas, some really cool stuff going on in here. Our engineering team have been working hard on some really cool props, animatronics, moving drawers, that kind of stuff, uh, and some ghost containment units and things going in here too. So starting to look really, really cool and really coming to life. Another nice little addition is the blueprints for Dr. Kinley's Phantom Phasers that I guess we'll use on the ride to capture the ghost. So a nice little addition here in between some of the, uh, some of the more animatronic theming. So something else new in here is the addition of these entrance gates. Now these are spring loaded and this is what guests will use to get on the ride and people queue up to it as well. Uh, to make the operation nice and quick we've added numbers to the flooring so once the carpet goes down they'll be within the carpet and that will hopefully help people understand where to go when they, uh, when they board Ghostly Manor. So really cool updates inside Ghosty Manor and on the ride vehicles, including the Phantom Phasers. Now, these have been installed uh, on the ride vehicle with their mounts as well. As you can see, they light up. When you fire them, you get a great sound and the gun also vibrates as well. As you can hear, lots of testing going on in here too. Lagatronics are busy configuring all the ride system, making sure the Phantom Phasers and all the sensors and projectors all work together. And we're gonna learn a little bit more about that with Manu. So we're here with uh, Manu, who's the lead software developer for Lagatronics Projects, and he's been working on Ghosty Manor and all the game design. So thanks for joining us, Manu. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you start with a with a game system like this. It must be quite a big, big task. Well, of course, it's a, it, it consists of different components, of course. So you have the software, uh, but you also have the hardware, and yep. they need to uh, cooperate to get together yep. eventually. Uh, so my responsibility is mostly the software. So I yep. can tell you a lot about the software. Uh, and the hardware, uh, uh, I can also tell you something about it yeah. and explain how it works, yeah. but it's not my expertise, so no, I'll sorry. try to do my best. Yeah. Uh, but you begin, I, I mean, you know already, uh, with the designing party, they already had this concept, yeah. and we picked it up uh, with them, and before we informed you, we, we, we made some game design docs uh, about the games, yeah. and after that, we, we worked it out with them, they, mm -hmm. they, uh, they checked it. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, the game design docs, they're sort of like showing, showing you how the game's gonna work. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's about all. It's about the gameplay, the looks, the feels, yeah. uh, and, and also the graphics that we're going to yeah. use. And that's something that we sign off on with you. Exactly. We're, so, we're so but before thing. we involve you uh, yeah. in this, we we we, uh, we checked it with Lag. Yeah. Um, and uh, after that, we did an agile process with you guys, uh, which worked really, really well. Yeah. Uh, I would say. Yeah. So, uh, in, in a few months' time, we we uh, work towards the end product that we're yeah. implementing right now. So, hopefully, it's not a surprise. No, uh, no, it's but, not, uh, no. <laughs> so you know exactly we're what you're going to get. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's that's the way we we approach it uh, this time. So an agile yeah. approach uh, uh, and moving from the game design doc to the actual finished product that yeah. we have right now. Yeah. Uh, and now uh, uh, everything is in, the audio is in, the, the graphics yeah. are in, and we are ready to show it on screen here. Yeah. So, so that's what you're working on at the moment, calibrating everything, making everything work together. Because you say there's all the hardware, speakers, lighting, animatronics. Yeah. There's so much going on in here that all has to work easily together. So there must be some a big bit of software, or we've seen all the server apps in a previous video. Uh, uh, uh. So we, we know how much kit's up upstairs in the uh, in the media room, so uh, it's interesting to know how all that works together. Yeah, and that's also the, the magic and, and the fun part of being here, yeah. seeing everything come together from yeah. hardware to actually the game experience that yeah. we want to uh, yeah. let the user experience. Yeah. So obviously in Ghost of Manor there's physical sets and media as well to fire at and ghost to capture. So you, you mentioned this uh, trig system. Can you just talk about how that works a little bit? The way it works, it's like a, a MIDI a GPS system. Okay. So it works on a, a time code. So we have yeah. this fix, as we call it. The, there are little boxes uh, hanging around in the room yeah. and they communicate with the, uh, the shooters. Yeah. So they uh, register the timing between them. Right. And uh, okay. according to the timing, we yeah. can uh, let a, a, an algorithm loose on it. 
and they will calculate the exact position in the room. Wow. So it's yeah. uh, kind of cutting edge, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, it's very accurate also if it's uh, configured correctly, and wow. we're doing that right now. Yeah. Uh, but eventually, you don't need an actual physical uh, wire like this mm -hmm. to make it work. Uh, we do have it because it's more convenient for, for charging and stuff like that. But you could run around in the room and it will detect every, everywhere you're, uh, you're walking. I saw in a, a couple of a few weeks ago, uh, some of your team were in here scanning all the all yeah. the scenes. Yeah. Is, then that, is that what then builds a picture for the? So that's really important for uh, for the uh, the little boxes to be calibrated correctly. Okay. So we need to know exactly on the millimeter, even yeah. further than the millimeter where it is, yeah. so we can calculate the timing between the movers. Yeah. So and if that's all working together, then we know exactly the position of the of the movers. Right. Okay. So if all the boxes are calibrated correctly and we know the exact position they are, yeah. So that's why they were scanning it. Yeah. Uh, then we can determine the, the locations uh, very accurate. There's a lot that goes into it, and, and the, the, there must be a lot of technology inside the Phantom phases themselves to it is, yeah, communicate yeah. with the ride uh, and uh, obviously all the lighting and sound effects as well. Yeah, obviously it's kind of the same technology as we have in the phones. You have an accelerometer, they, they have a compass, they know where they are. Yeah. Uh, but mostly the technique of, of the GPS, is, uh, I call it GPS system, but it's like the time codes that we we send over and over. Yeah. Uh, that's mostly the positioning, yeah. and the accelerometer uh, will determine the, the rotation, obviously. So those things are all working, working together, together with the, the input uh, buttons, the output of the lights, yeah. uh, and they're all communicated through the air, but also through the onboard computers. Yeah. They'll then send it to the servers and yeah. communicate it to the game interfacing and the other stuff that we yeah. uh, connect. And eventually it's all got to come back and be displayed on this onboard screen here to show people what score they get in. Yeah, exactly. So there's a uh, lot of communication between all the systems uh, going on uh, yeah. all the time. So that makes it both complicated, but also yeah. the fun part for me to, yeah. to see it come together. It's all going to work fine then. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> we pray. <Yeah. laughs> no, we're going to make it up. Now, lots of testing to go, and uh, you're obviously busy in here yeah. uh, configuring things like yeah, music and sound. And we had a good walk around yesterday where Manu showed us uh, all the scenes uh, inside the ride. And we had some feedback that we gave him, and now that's what, what the team are working on to, uh, to put right. And lots of big, long lists of things to go through, I imagine, but we've got uh, a bit of time to get there. We're still on schedule, so yeah. it's, it's, it's all right yeah. so far. Uh, but indeed, uh, there are also colleagues coming in for, for all the different disciplines that we have, uh, yeah. uh, both hardware and software. Yeah. So uh, in the oncoming week, we hope to make major steps in, uh, in uh, letting it work, work all together. Awesome. And uh, especially combined with the, with the, with the rotating platform yeah. and uh, all the backend services that uh, need to be connected. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us, really interesting. Right. I'm sure the viewers really enjoyed hearing all of that. Uh, we love hearing about technology behind the ride because it's so advanced, something completely different at Portons that we're really excited to show you all. Of course, another important part of the ride system is the CCTV. So this has all been put together now and all the CCTV cameras mounted. So really important that the operators can see the ride while it's operating so they can double check everyone's safe and secure inside the ride. So this is the exit panel for the exit operator. It's a two-person operation, this ride, so minimum of two operators. We have one at the entrance and one at the exit, and they both have to be happy the ride is ready to go and press the green button for the ride to start. Thanks for watching this episode. It's really interesting to hear from Manu and all the team here about how complex this ride is and the technology that goes on, all the work that goes on behind the scenes to bring a ride like this to life. Months and months, years in advance, we've been working on this ride, so it's really exciting to see it get to this stage now. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the notification notification bell so you don't miss the next video where we're going to be having a look at the external theming and how that's all coming together outside of Ghosty Manor. So see you in the next one. Goodness me, I was like mid-burp. Oh yeah, I actually missed that. Wow, that's lovely that is. If I can remember what I'm saying. Cool, 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 cool. So you mentioned that trick three system. Can you just talk a bit about that? Well, it's not what actually trick three, it's trick four. Trick four <laughs> so it's even better. <laughs> even better. <laughs> can we do it again? <laughs> yeah, that one and on the right side. Yeah. Okay. No. Let me double check. Broke it. <laughs>